I see the gods and the goddesses in the building, so this is cool. Uh, my name is David K. Farrell. Just to introduce myself to you all, I am a filmmaker, quote unquote, uh, film executive. I call it getting my Kenny and Ivory Wayne's on. Um, I've been in the industry for since 1998. I've always been a conscious kid. Ever since I was a young child, if you were, if there was nobody black on it, I didn't watch it. And I was raised in a very Christian household. I've been privy, especially being a 70s baby, being born in the year 72, I think um, that was a special time. I don't know what was going on in the cosmos at the time, but something was going on that touched all of us that were born around that time. And growing up during what I call the golden age of hip hop. And so for me, I had the opportunity after college to work at Black Entertainment Television, which was a dream come true, so I thought at the particular time. Um, and I've often, I've heard Brother Black Dot and Brother Rich speak about the entertainment industry and I always thought it was so unique considering how they're really like on the outskirts but they're so correct in everything they've ever said. And I've held off from wanting to speak about it because um, in black entertainment television I've somewhat become their Neo. And there was a moment in time where I still fought to try to hold on to BT, but they blacklisted me, so fuck it. Now I can tell everything. That's how I really feel about it. And by the way, I curse. So anybody that has a problem cursing, forgive me now. But um, what happens is, from jump, I want to tell you all, BET does not care about you. There is not one executive in BET that has ever in a meeting said, this is what we need for black America. So once you understand that, and, and just to give you a little bit of my background um, to kind of show my legitimacy, um, I was Dave Chappelle standing in the first season of Chappelle show. He was like a mentor to me. I don't even know if he realized it at the time. So when he walked away, he prophesied that to me during the first season, what he was going to do. Um, I even worked, was em nominated for an Emmy working with um, Bravo and NBC's Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. I worked on the set design team. We, when you, if you ever watch that show, The Houses, some of those lights, that was me putting it up and, I, and I'm not an electrician. So, you know, this is, this is how this industry is. Everyone gets on. And what I realized very early was that it's not the problem that we see in this industry is not, I hate letting white people off the hook, but it ain't, they, it's not them, truthfully speaking. It's really not. I really wanted to walk in this industry and say to myself, it is the white man and this is the reason why, but I can honestly tell you any boost I've ever been given has been through a Caucasian. They have a different mindset because this entertainment industry for them and what a lot of Nubians don't realize, that is their playing ground. That is an old boys network. They pass off movies and projects from each other like it's nothing. That is their network, and when you are African-American and you get into that industry, you are playing in their playground. So what the reality is, is that, I know I was saying to Brother Dot earlier that when I was a younger, when I was a child, I used to read about, you know, how Malcolm X got assassinated and read about, you know, what happened during the Civil Rights Movement. And I would always kind of think, like, that's crazy, man. It's some dude stuff and say, get your hand out my pocket. And that's what did, like, a black man would set that up. Well, I'm here to tell you, I have looked eye to eye, face to face with that get your hand out my pocket nigga that runs BET. Um, I was, when I first got in there, I was there. I was like the, the new young rambunctious kid. I grew up in this thing called hip hop. I would have worked there for free. And you tell me years after, a couple years after graduating college that I was working in this thing called rap music that my father said would never last. To me, it was the most amazing thing. And I was fortunate because I was always, I had a bit of a, I understood that creativity comes from the cosmos. So I was always very creative. And I was the one that put Eve on television the first time and pushed her 
I created the prototype for what we see. Even on a lower level with Dipset, Jim, Jim and Cam know they ain't getting money if D. Brad ain't in there pushing their projects. I was always at the cusp of what was going on, and they knew that. But at the time when we were in D.C., when it was owned by Bob Johnson, they actually did care. It just looked crappy because they didn't know what they were doing. There were no producers there because black people really don't learn how to produce and direct television and film. So what you were getting was from the heart. That's why there was a time you could tolerate the E.T. as crappy as it looked because they did care. But once Bob Johnson sold it to Viacom, which owned MTV and owned VH1, things change. But what Viacom did was no different than what you might see a drug dealer do on the block. He's got the block, but here comes some, new, some young competition. It's either we go to war, or I say, come on in here, man, because I got the supplier. And that's what Viacom did. And they put people in place. And the vice president's name is Stephen Hill. If you ever want to email him, his name is stephen.hill at bet.net. So I'm just throwing it out there. But they put him in place specifically to change the structure of what we see. Because I remember in 98, interning at MTV, and every day at 4 o'clock, these white people would clamor out on television to turn to BET. Then finally, after a month of this, I asked them why. And they said, well, this is how we know what's going on in the streets. This is how we know what's hot. All of a sudden, seven years later, you're telling me that I have to go to some Caucasian and ask him what is going on. But it's been methodically made that way. I watched BET make Ashanti a star. I watched BET make B2K stars. There's a certain image and a directive that these executives have been given. This is how black people would look. I produced a show, and I had the executives call me and tell me I had too many dark-skinned people towards the front of the camera. You understand what I'm saying? This is what was said to me by a vice president. Um, I've seen it. I've watched them decipher it down. That's why what we have with our children, those between the ages of 10 and 15, are bitches and whores and homos. And forgive my slang, but it is what it is. They've made it that way. You don't see black women on BET. You see bitches and whores. Unless they're light-skinned. Now, if they're really light-skinned like Roxy, it's all good. You understand? But this is a directive. And I need, and I really wanted to get up and explain this because I need you all to understand that it is what it is. If it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. And what they're giving these babies out here, you understand? And if you ever met Stephen Hill, you would get it right away why he does what he does. You have the creative director who's a woman that hires all the talent that you see, the people that introduce all the videos. She's short, she's ugly as hell, and her personality is as ugly as her physical features. This is why you don't see women on BT. Matter of fact, the last female artist that was on BT that made something of herself was the last female artist that I pushed. Her name was Eve. And as I said earlier, they deaded that right away. I created Spring Bling, their yearly show. I don't take credit for where it's at now because that's not what it was about. Um, there's another brother that was with me at the time. His name is John Tucker. He goes by the name of Dr. Chief. He's a video director. And from 98 to 2000, it was him and I that was laying the foundation for what we see. He, John is the reason why these Southern artists got, had the opportunity to come in. And I was the reason why certain New York artists, if I, put it this way, if I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't even be standing here talking to y'all because I'd be a multimillionaire. I had no idea that these people, that I was just playing their videos every day and getting them on Rap City, that it was going to take over like it did. I had no idea Jay-Z was going to blow the way he did. But just like everyone else, there's structure. And there's a structure that is on television. And I don't look at, I don't, I'm going to be as bold as to say that it's really almost not racist anymore because it's so accepted. You understand what I'm saying? They've made it such like, so accepted. Like I recently... Two months ago, we got into an argument with Ashley Larry, Donnell Rollins, because Dave taught me a lot. When I was his man, I tell people it was like sitting on the bench behind Kobe Bryant. You just ain't playing in the game, but Kobe comes out and tells you why he did what he did, how he did it. And Dave meant a lot. And to see this dude and to hear this guy, who I've known before he even got on Chappelle's show, who I saw how the white people treated him on Chappelle's show, to see, to hear this brother for these Caucasians try to, to attempt to continue to devour Dave because... The whole world was upset with Dave because he walked away from their God. Dave looked their God in the face and said, I don't need you, and he walked away. And that's what everyone was upset about. It was a spiritual thing that happened. So it was offensive to me to hear this dude. So I heard him on the radio, and I called him at the station. And luckily for me, Tigger and Egypt were on the radio station. And I worked with Tigger. Me and Tigger were like Shaq and Kobe. We bumped heads all the time, but we worked great together. You know, so they knew that I was like that. So he was really surprised. But I'm, my thought process is, how long does this go on? You feel what I'm saying? And is that...
I inadvertently come to the industry because I was conscious and I cared. I showed I showed them my card. I didn't play the I played the spook sitting by the door in college very well, but once I got into the professional realm, because I was take, taken aback because these were black people. And I know my man Azariah always talks about the psychological ramifications of putting the first wave you're gonna get is black people. When you do anything that's the opposite of what this industry says, the first thing they're gonna do is send you a, a whole bunch of black people. And that's what through it took me literally four years to realize what was going on. You understand? I mean I was deep in BT, meaning like the vice president used to take me out and introduce me to other people, to Leo Cohen's and all these other people, because I didn't realize at the time what he was grooming me for. And he would send his assistant and they would come get me, come on, D, let's go hang out. And, you know, we balling, we having a ball. I mean, and then eventually I was led to the long table. We were all out. The vice president comes over in a stress limo, but I'm dumb, I'm stupid. I don't know any difference. I hop in the car with him, we're partying. And, um... Make a long story short, what I realized four years later, I was the man's date that night. You understand what I'm saying? And as we're leaving the venue, he kicks his man out. We're sitting in the limo. And I remember telling my dad the next day, I said, you know, Dad, remember when you were young, you would date a girl, and at the end of the night, you're sitting there, and it's that awkward feeling? That's what it was. And, and that's what I felt. I'm sitting in the limo. I'm, and understand, I'm a young dude. Derek Jeter's at one end. I'm a Yankees fan. Derek Jeter's at one end with the same model I seen in the paper last week. Stephon Marbury's here, and we balling. I'm, I'm thinking about the women. I'm not understanding that my vice president sitting there waiting for me to respond to him in a certain way. And I don't, and, and I don't mean to be offensive, but in a sense, now I understand how a molested child felt or a woman that gets raped. Because what this man, the way that he came at me, I walked in the limo Friday. I was a golden child at BET. Got out. Saturday morning, I was the worst thing they had ever seen because he made the mistake of allowing me into his world of homosexuality and all the drugs and things that they were doing because they thought that I wanted to be a part of that. Now I realize I know I was just a dude that loved hip hop. You understand? When I did not take their bait, I was then, you know, things started happening. All of a sudden, I was a problem. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm getting suspended for this and that and so forth and so on. Then they didn't hire me back for three years. But at the time, I'm thinking like, you know, if I could just get him back in BT and just work hard, I can show him, you know, what I've learned from all these other projects. And then I got back and they attempted it again, but this time the God knew what he was doing. So then I became blacklisted. You understand? So, and it's been a struggle in a sense because you have to really convince yourself that this isn't what you're seeing. You understand? And the biggest struggle is my own people. My own people. Until I realize that I'm not even from the same species as the majority of these people that I run into. You know what I'm saying? So my whole purpose is I really, I don't want to get but so deep because these brothers have already done it. I just want to be the dude to say, look, I work in that industry and, and I see, I've seen it with my own eyes what these people go through. Um, like I was having a conversation earlier with Brother Rich. Jay-Z, that's, that's, that boy, that's a clone. I have no clue who this dude is right now. You understand? I, and I dare anyone to listen to his albums and tell me it's the same guy. I dare you to even look at him in a video and say, that's Jay-Z. It's not Jay-Z. Who knows who that guy is? majority of your rap stars are planted. They're ages. It's like how the cops will take some kid, will snap some kid off the corner, and they're like, I know you was involved in that murder, but this is what I need you to do. And you put him on that block. And he's the one that lets off the shot to make the block hot. This is what they do. How do you think 50 Cent got an a, a, a armored car? As a new rapper, are you serious? He's a new rapper. He has an armored car? Agent. You understand what it is? It is what it is. All of them. If they're a superstar, they are an agent. They are planted. Jay-Z is sitting with Russell Simmons, and next week they're taping a PSA commercial on anti-Semitism. Anti what part of the game is that? Now, niggas in Brooklyn and Harlem getting their heads still beaten by the cops. Now, I done seen Jay-Z boycott Cristal. I done seen him get mad over something else, mundane. And then you mean to tell me you can't speak for your babies, your own children? These people are planted. And what the mind, what the mind fuck is, what they give is that everyone knows that 70%. And put it this way, industry people know that 75% of the music is bought by suburban white children. But yet, they look at you all and say, the hell's the problem, y'all? It's not my fault these kids are killing each other within the music and so forth and so on. But yet, what it takes is for everybody who's not a part of that scene to have some balls and stand up. And it is what it is because you can't, you're not going to battle, battle that machine that we call the industry. Our people wrote in walls 
these Europeans make films and movies, and they tell you every day what's going on. But they know that the average person will watch and say, oh, Heroes is a good show, not realizing that they're telling you what's going to happen. I jokingly tell people all the time, if you really want to see what the uh, state of America is, every Friday night, turn to Channel 11 and watch WWE SmackDown. Vince McMahon will tell you everything that's going on. But people look and say, oh, man, that's wrestling. Now realizing that here's Vincent Man with this black dude that's the champ, him and his wife, and he's the king and she's the queen, and you understand, he's the king of kings. They're not realizing all this because it's wrestling. Oh, well, I know the woman that wrote The Matrix. We talk. They knew that watching The Matrix, you would say, oh, that was a crazy-ass movie, man. See, when Neo jumped off that, not even realizing that this woman just gave you a divine lesson. And it was stolen from her. But it had to be because she wouldn't have been able to put it out. You understand? So if you, all I want to say, I really want to end it. I'm hoping, I, I speak like a jazz musician. I'm all over the place, so forgive me. But all I want to really say is that when you're watching it, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck and it's on BET, it's probably a fucking duck. And we really need to stop watching BET because there's nothing on there. Because the show I had was called the road show. We went to black colleges and we played we play games. Um, we played physical games. And, but the problem was they forgot who they were dealing with. So I would take out all the Christian questions and put in questions about the continent of Africa or Egypt. And these babies would know this information. It would go on and on and on and on and on. And it was crappy looking because they did everything in their power to, to undercut. I mean, I didn't want to take it personal, but it got to a point. Even my director said, man, they're trying to sabotage you. They gave me a Jewish producer who lost half the shows. And if that ain't sabotaging, I don't know what is. We would be on the road and be working two, three days with, with no money. But once again, they forgot when you're dealing with a guy who knows who he is, half of my crew watched me work crew production with them before, so they weren't going to let us down. They would want to do what they had to do. But we would beat every show. Every show last year would beat everyone with the exception of 106 and Park. And they killed the show. Now, conspiracy would say because of the content, which is the truth, and that's just the reality. They always called me about my content, the content, but I would feign dumb and say, what are you talking about? We ain't cursing. Because they could not come out and tell me, look, nigga, stop putting all this black shit in there. They can't do that. You understand what I'm saying? So what we all must realize is what you hear on the radio, our children, our babies are being destroyed. You understand? Our babies, they are purposely, pur and these are people that look like us, you understand, there's a white man that gives a directive, but in my humble opinion, that vice president at BET don't got to go that goddamn hard. You know, I could even understand, I can understand him doing what he does, but, but giving some substance, but they don't. So, it's, and that's the biggest hurdle that we need to get over, is that the people that, that cause the most harm is in effect of, the psych of psychology, of the psychology of our babies, are people that look like us. Like Barack Obama. Everyone's excited because he's running. Well, guess what? Barack said in his autobiography, he don't relate to y'all niggas. He said, he say, hey, I've never really faced racism. I don't, the average, average African-American, I don't relate to. Because, but he is a picture of what they want. And BET is painting that picture. We don't see dark people on BET. It's not going to happen. Unless she's some chick shaking ass. Then you see her ass, but you won't see her face. And they do this purposely. And I hope that in this short time, what I've given you is just, I'd like I said, I didn't want to get, I'm only going to go but so far because it's been covered and you've heard it a million times, but you're talking to someone that is one of the architects of what you see out here today. And I would dare any rapper, artist, they all know. And that's how I actually have stayed afloat. Because believe it or not, a lot of the entertainers know what we know. It's just that they, they are coming from such a, a mundane level of, I'm going to take universal law to teach me how to make some money. You understand what I'm saying? They're not, they, they, you would be surprised how many active friends that I have that I've been right to 125 that know what time it is. But that's how they got to where they got. But they just didn't, they separated the physical from the spiritual. And then also a lot of times what I find out in my travels is that a lot of cats are just caught up because they signed their name on a contract. And when you get used to living a certain way, it's kind of hard to tell a cat to be broke. Because trust me when I tell you, when the industry says he's a problem, they will make sure you don't get money. Believe you me when I tell you, I'm stunned and out here hustling right now. They will make sure that you won't eat. Everywhere you go, they will say, oh, that's the problem. No one will ever say what your problem is. No one can ever say I lied or stole or cheated. No one can ever say my projects were terrible. But what they will tell you, you just can't do anything in front of them. You just can't ask them to do anything. And it is what it is. You understand? So 
please, I beg of y'all, man, take it seriously. This is mind control to its fullest extent. These rappers that they are pushing it. Because you got to remember, hip hop started as Rage Against the Machine. And I always look suspiciously when a bunch of white people telling me that Kanye West is this great rapper. Since when the white people, and I always say it in the industry audience, and I've said it in front of these Caucasians, white boy can't tell me nothing about hip hop, because I am hip hop. So basically, shut the fuck up and sit down and mind your business. But this is what they do. You understand? So Kanye West, people, oh, we love Kanye, we love Kanye, because he's so foolish, he's still on television and said, President Bush doesn't like black people. I wasn't impressed. What impresses me is if you, if you back that statement up, understand it. He's an intelligent dude. You, you understand what I'm saying? But he was made up. He was crafted. He was put in that mold. Boom, here you go. Because with all due respect, when I was growing up, the cool rappers was not the squares. There was a reason why there was a hard rocks and the thugs, and there was the squares. And I was in the square class. But I always looked at the hard rocks like, yo, they cool. Since when does a Kanye West become one of the biggest rappers? Eminem. Only time he ever did in uh, BET was when I produced the show. One of the lamest white boys I ever met in my life. And my best friend was white growing up. Understand what I'm saying? And I'm looking at this guy like this is the guy that 10 years from now that they're going to tell my baby is the king of hip-hop. But once again, because we don't do anything about it, we allow MTV to give the Beastie Boys all this credit for hip hop. Yeah, I knew every dude in the hood had a Beastie Boys album, but they ain't mean shit to me. I mean, they had a good album, but they missed something in white America. That's why there's no such thing as black culture. Black culture is what these Caucasians are comfortable with. And I've had this discussion many times in the industry. There ain't no such thing. First of all, I, I would love to question Mr. Russell Simmons. Stop calling hip-hop a culture. Because if it's a culture, that means it ain't universal. My, getting my brains beat in because I'm black ain't universal. It, it, it is what it is. You understand? But we've, we've shared this culture. And now you have a bunch of people like Caucasians are like, the girl who didn't like you when you, when you was broke and dirty, then you get money, now she's on you. And I'm like, well, you know, if, if I would look at a black woman, according to Kanye West, she's a gold digger, look at her that way, how is it that the Caucasians get to do the same exact thing that I'm beefing about black women doing? You understand? How is it that you stand in an interview and defend homosexuals? And that's an activity, really, to be honest with you. But yet and still, though, you have nothing to say about the women. You understand? And that's what's been missing. That's what they rape from these young children is the feminine element. And it's purposely done. I was per when I was back helping Rap City before, I was trying to push Remy Martin hard just to get a female out there. Stonewall that every end. They don't want it. Because they understand the feminine energy is what's missing. Because everything is like this all day long. I don't even like dudes for the most part. I don't got no male friends. You understand what I'm saying? Everything all day is like this all day long. And I always say to people, so when your little 12 year old daughter's looking at 50 Cent and like, oh, he's so sexy, I said, guess what? Your 12 year old son goes through the same sexual emotions. And 50 wearing the bra strap, little t shirt going on, showing his muscles. So what you think is going to happen? Now you got a bunch of 12, 13 year old little boys that are all gay and don't even, didn't even give themselves the opportunity to see if they had something else. Because it's media. And I know for a fact because I've led, I've cut interviews the way I wanted. I've made the, the biggest star say what I wanted them to say, how I wanted them to say it. You understand? So they're feeding us. You know, you look at BET and we got all this AIDS stuff all day long. And I always ask these people in BET, when the last time you been to an AIDS room? No, nah, I ain't never been to one. And I ask black people all the time, you give me these statistics about AIDS that you get from the newspapers and TV, the last time you been to an AIDS room? I mean, according to the stats, we should be going to one every other day. Two, three days, two, two times a month at least. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, especially, I mean, I got nothing but black women in my life. And I refuse to believe in 34 years of my existence down here that now one, one woman will say, you know, Dave, I'm HIV positive. I ain't been to one. Now, I don't know the nigga that died from lupus, cancer, shot, hit by a car. But I ain't never known no dude to die AIDS. I'm sorry. So I'm asking all these people, man, where are these numbers coming from? Who is this? I don't get it. But because we lean everyone to listen to the actor. Listen to what the entertainer got to say. Listen to what the athlete has to say. And this is the society we raise our babies in. And that's why this is so important for me to get out, is that without realizing it, yeah, in my generation, those of us between the age of 30 and 45, we dropped the ball, straight up and down. We dropped the ball. It was, it was, it was up to us to tell our babies who Tupac was. Tupac and Big's death had nothing to do with rap music, nothing at all. Pac was a revolutionary. The powers that beat knew that. 
Big love. Sorry, nigga, you just was a victim of circumstance. I feel sorry for his family. It was if it was me, I'd have had to get killed. Pac was Pac was a revolutionary. Remember, Malcolm X was a Malcolm X at 25, baby. I think Malcolm might have been sitting in jail. Pac, they knew. Understand, they knew who Tupac Shakur was. I don't know no rapper that's died of hip hop. Jam Master J did not die because of hip hop. Big L did not die because of hip hop. You understand? Fat Plant had a friggin' heart attack, for Christ's sake. You understand? So, but this is what we say hip hop is violent. Why? Wow, who says it's violent? Oh, Caucasians say it's violent. So we listen to everything that they say. We look at ourselves from their perspective. And this is what happens in the industry. So you have a bunch of black people, like, um, what's that fat boy? Kevin Lyles from Def Jam. And, and L.A. Reid and Babyface, and we're looking at them like, yo, they're going to hold it down. No, they're not, because they're looking at you from the same perspective that Leo Cohen is, the big white Jew standing right there talking shit all day long about, you know, Jay telling y'all how he making them niggas millions. You understand what I'm saying? So they're looking at one another from that perspective, and that's all they see. I got into an argument in a big campus-wide meeting because I was saying the images, man, you know, I, I love women, but damn, I got a little sister, and I would hate for her to think that she got to grow up shaking her ass. They told me in my face, man, this is a business. End of story. You were nothing but business to these people. Bob Johnson has a basketball team. And Stephen Hill is going on vacations. And, they, you know, even Reginald Hudlin is there. You know, he's there. He's doing his thing as well. BT is a whore. And everybody's getting some. And the people that are paying the price are your children. So I just want to end on saying that take it as seriously as it is. When you watch television, when you watch television and movies, if you say, well, that, I thought that, yes, that's what it meant. And I, like I, I worked on Spider-Man 3 with the stunt unit. I've seen the things that they do purposely. You know what I'm saying? I, stay, I sit there and I watch and I listen. Because for some reason, the Caucasians in mainstream television and film don't have issues with me. They don't really get me. It's just the black people that see me coming a mile away. So I've been able to kind of sneak and stand by and listen. You know, as like I said, I was Dave Chappelle standing. So that meant I was in between the executive producer and the director. And then Dave would come over, and I heard all of this stuff. I knew that Dave was going to catch hell because the white boy was the one who wrote all the racist skits. He knew that I knew. That's why me and Neil never got along. Because he used to write every, every racist skit that you saw Dave do that. We laughed at the white boy wrote it. Dave would just do it. You know, and I remember even calling my mom saying, man, I can't be conscious on this set because this nigga say some anything. But it wasn't just as much him. I remember when it first started, no one talked to Dave. It would be Dave and a couple people, and they'd be like, Dave, get your black ass to set. When it, when it became a money thing, the Caucasians swarmed him. They were constantly around him. Every move Dave made, it was 20 Caucasians around him. So it was only a matter of time, and I remember he came and told me as much. He, he gave, one day, just out of the blue, he walked up to me and gave me a bunch of advice and told me, the last thing he said was, never forget who you are, no matter how much money they offer you. Then a year later, the brother walked off. Even though he got his money, don't get it twisted, Dave walked away with some cash. But it is what it is. A majority of these people that we look at as the stars that our children look at are agents. Whether you like it or not, that means your favorite rapper is probably, if he's got a multi-million, if he, if he sold more than a million DVD CDs, agent. It is what it is. He's been playing it here for you. He's been playing it here for you. I've watched him do it. I've watched BT. Bill BT made Murder Inc. I was there when they first started it, but then when the thing, when everything fell apart, they stepped to the side. BT made Little Kim. When everything fell apart, Little Kim, they stepped to the side. So this is the continuous, continuous rotation. And remember, it's not owned by Bob Johnson anymore. It's owned by Viacom, the same people that own MTV, that own MTV2, that make all these shows mocking y'all black asses, and we sit and laugh. So that's it. That's it. That's what I wanted to say. And on that note, I would end it. And I hope that everyone got something out of this because I've been wanting to speak for a while. But I was I ain't gonna lie. I was trying to hold on, like make sure I don't really put myself in the corner. But my warrior spirit after, after a while, it's like, OK, how long am I going to be quiet? I ain't making money from BET anyway. So at the end of the day, what's important is for everyone out here to know what time it is. Peace. That's right. That's cosmic, and you can't stop it. You can't stop it, brother and sister. Give me the mic. That's right. So I understand that because majority of us really.
we only wanted to be accepted. So the moment these, you know, these Caucasians started giving these hugs out, niggas was like, I'm cool. And that's really where people dropped the ball because our, I, in my opinion, my, our parents from my generation used to always tell us, you know, you go out there work twice hard as a white man. And, you know, they, you know, basically everything was accepting and accept, try to be accepted somehow. So a lot of these entertainers and athletes, that's what it is. And, and because they live such a, in a physical mind state, once I get that contract, I mean, come on, man, you asking me to come from living in a $2 million home to living in an apartment, and you understand? Because like, even with just what I was making, I went from being able to spend uh, two, $300 a day on bullshit to sleeping on, from sofa to sofa. So, you know, it just, it just that I'm a competitive person. That's what, you know, my, my nature is, I have a warrior nature, so I, I took it as a, as, as a fight. Now I take it as I say to them, thank you for the compliment. There's a lot of people in this world you could have paid attention to, but you decided to pay attention to me. So I got the system looking at me. I'm like, thanks. But at the time, it was difficult. Every other day, I used to wake up and be like, yo, I think I'm just fucked up. Like, you know, ain't nobody calling me no more. You know, I ain't got no money. I'm, I'm losing my place. So it's difficult. And that's the one thing I always say when we look at these people. Like, I understand. Believe you me, I understand the sellout. I understand why a person would because it's easier, man. It's easy to just ignore it. And to get money, you understand? It's, so it is what it is. It's hard, to, it's hard to ask an athlete to do that. You saw the hell someone like Allen Iverson caught just for being himself. Who wants that? So once you signed the contract with BET or any of the, the um, companies and you try to get out of it, is there such a thing getting out of the contract, I mean, without being killed? Man, first and foremost... Ain't nobody killing nobody. We don't die. Only the de and that's what it's called. The suckers always scared that I'm gonna get killed. If you you understand, we don't die. But so of course there's a way. That's why I can't come back in. Their best bet is to never let me back. But that's not gonna happen because I'm kicking the stomp on my way back. Because I'm like I don't die, so I'll tell everything. You understand? So you know everyone ha people that have that mind state. Yeah, you stay in your contract. I don't have that mind state. Yeah, they did. Last year this time, they asked me to produce the road show. They came and they asked me to say, hey, you know, I was gone for uh, however long and rose like a phoenix, you know, and came back and I did the show. And then they saw what they saw. So, yeah, you can you can do that. Every, you can do it, but a lot of people don't. But it's, the, it's, it's where we live. It's the day and age that we live in. So to ask someone to give up money is difficult. You understand? It's difficult. It's one thing you never had it. And I think a lot of people come from that perspective. If I've never made it to the NBA, it's easy for me to be like, man, you tell David Stern. But when you're there, it's a totally different ball game. I've seen both sides of it. To this day, I still have actor and rapper friends that I see. And it's difficult when you see me on TV every week and I really don't have money. You understand? And I have an image I have to live up to now. And this is what they get caught in. So the next thing you know, and they are just grabbing people. It's like, grab my man, I'm grabbing you, and then 30 days from now, not only am I throwing more money in your face you've ever seen, now I'm, te and I'm telling you, like, look, man, you need to let go of your friends because they're going to hurt your business opportunities. And you're really thinking, like, yeah, because these Caucasians aren't necessarily being racist. They're looking at that if, he, if you make money, I'm going to make three times as much as you're making. So it will behoove me to tell you to tell your friends to step off. And this is what happens. And it's just it's, it's human nature. And this, this whole system that, we, that we're in, Western civilization, has always taken advantage of the human nature of the Nubian. But at some point, I say the Nubians need to grab their balls and do what they need to do because it's easy to keep looking at Jay-Z. But we know that white man standing right there. But all we do is this all day long. Look at our kids. Look at our kids in school. Even though we know that the school system's from the 50s and ain't been updated ever since. We know Christopher Columbus ain't discover America, but we'll get mad at little Jamal because he don't want to study that bullshit. So at some point, with all due respect, the enlightened ones especially, we need to get some, grab some balls and say, look, man, I know what this is. You say this is black culture. I say that Jesus couldn't have been black if he did it, couldn't have been white if he did exist. But no one says that. So we send our little daughter out to, to, to the world. Worship this white, blind head, blue-eyed white man. Oh, this is, you understand what I'm saying? We know that every Caucasian female wants to look like our babies, but yet still we allow our babies to look like them. So when you look at it, 
no matter what anybody says, it comes back to us. You feel what I'm saying? So that's why you're not, these cats ain't getting out of contracts because they don't have the balls to say, I don't want to do it no more. It's very simple. You know, I mean, I, I'm friends with Rasheed Wallace who plays for the Pistons. That's why he gets technicals all the time. He is the reason for them doing this. Because Rasheed, if you ever met Rasheed, you realize, like, damn, if he wasn't playing ball, he'd be here with us. He don't like Caucasians. That's why he gets to, he said it to my face. Oops, sorry, she. But, you know, you understand what I'm saying? It is what it is. So, but you have to be, but he has a wife and a child. So now the sis, that's why I don't have any children. Because I'm not going to allow these, these diabolical ones that hold over my head my little child. Because I don't want to look like a savage to the rest of the world. Because I know he, he's an immortal soul. I said take him. You understand what I'm saying? Because no one else would understand that. So we're just in a very diabolical system, y'all, and there's, and there's nothing. We keep trying to work our way around this bullshit, and everywhere we turn this bullshit. At some point, we're going to kick the door down. There's a door standing right in front of us. I kicked it down. Fuck it, I'm out. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of people just like me. A lot, majority of math for everybody here, as far as I'm concerned, has kicked the door down, but we got to somehow try to drag everyone else, these lazy bastards, and say, look, man, I'm fighting for your child more than you fighting for your child yourself. So it is what it is. There is no real answer. Solid. All right. Give him another round. Thank you. That was a beautiful presentation, by the brother, don't you think? Yeah. What you just saw from that brother was a, a, a live and upfront presentation of a modern day Neo who unplugged himself from the everyday television matrix and is here to actually tell you his findings and his suffering and his sacrifice to come back and give the truth and clarify what brothers like Black Dot, myself, Bobby Hammett have talked about the download, boule, homosexual things that go on in the industry and how our perception gets compromised every day due to the fact that we don't stand up and that actual presentation will change lives because he's shown you that you can actually step away from the million dollar contracts, the, uh, the high profile lifestyle, the women, being able to understand the initiation you're about to go through when you interface with homosexual tendencies by vice presidents and these people up there, so on and so forth. And as hard as it is for us to understand that some of these rappers may be homosexual, he's here actually clarifying it or to let you know that they're actually agents. You can't actually fathom how can a hardcore Jay-Z or 50 Cent actually be gay. He's actually letting you know the step-by-step -step process and clarifying what we've talked about for years. So I actually wanted to give him another round of applause. Because it's not every day that you see people actually unplug themselves and give you, you know, true tales like that. And um, today I forgot to actually mention that this presentation, these two, this two-day event is being brought forward by the House of Consciousness in production, in, in conjunction with the Moo Productions. So let's give it up for the brother Sarnetta. And without further ado, we actually got a late day started. I want to bring up the brother Cypher, who's going to be getting to a beautiful presentation. Let's give it for Cypher. Peace, Hotep, Cthulhu. What I'm about to get into is some of everything on the occult realm. Hip hop, um, get into, uh, speak on these uh, soulless societies. I call them soulless societies because not only a caucasoid, but you have some of us that are reincarnated, uh, reincarnated here as. Uncle Tom's, you understand? And they're here among us today. They take on a form as one of us. You might not, not have seen them in the street, so forth and so on, but they play an active role in draining us, draining our dark matter powers. These, these powers are in your soul, containing your DNA, all right? So when you hear words like voodoo and things of that nature, you shouldn't fear it. This is your God power. If we're going to call ourselves gods and goddesses, we must understand that voodoo, things of that nature, are keys to our power. We have to become practical in the knowledge. We can't just walk around and say, well, I know this and I know that. We know that we are gods. So now let's use our God powers. Let's be practical in our everyday approach and how we see ourselves as gods and goddesses. You understand? So I'm here to basically break down a lot of the spookism that's going on within our culture called the occult. 
cut this off. Just downsize that. Yeah. Okay. I can stay like that for now. Um, no matter how many people, conscious, unconscious, whatever, I speak to on the occult, like we can speak on uh, who won the game, who won that fight. Then when it comes down to talking consciousness, we could talk, you know. But then when it comes down to talking about the occult, when it comes down to talking about our hidden science, that's what occult is, all right? Uh, either, either we change the subject or I get a lot of niggas just trying to find excuses to get away from my black ass because it's, it's, a, it's a feeling that comes over them like, oh, this nigga is about to get into this, this scary shit. I, I can't fuck with him. So let me leave. Let me get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? We could talk about certain the pyramids. We could talk about all this stuff all day. But when I start to get into your power, who you are, your deeper, darker side, that's when we get scared. That's when we fear. All right? Um, we have any chalk? Awesome. Thanks. talk about the occult, we're talking about the first prefix that they use in the word occult is OC. OC means hidden, concealed, to hide. We're talking about cult, we're talking about culture, way of life, our black sciences, our hidden black sciences, all right? And that's a tool that they've been using, scare tactics that they've been using to hide who we really are, all right? Um, fear is the mind killer. All right, so when we fear the things, the deeper, dark aspects of ourselves, we tend to, our mind tends to just shut down. We can't, we can't, we can't control it. We just shut down. All right. Now, I'm just going to read a little something for you. The upper echelon, the secret societies above all governmental power. All right, let's just call them the soulless parasites. They have lower and higher level operative agents. These are, you know, what the brother was saying in BET, you have these rappers that give you an image. That's not really them, but they give you an image promoted by these soulless parasites, these corporations, all right, that operate above the government. And their main purpose on this planet is to drain you and suck your spiritual energy that you're not using. You so caught up, we so caught up into where's the next party going to be, uh, you know, who, 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 who did this, who did what, who shot what, you understand what I'm saying? The latest uh, sneakers, all this stuff. Meanwhile, they drain you every day. They're using your sciences on you. You're the experiment. All right? They have upper and lower operatives. These are agents, right? And they use scare tactics to strike fear into the psyches of the sleepwalkers. The sleepwalkers are those ignorant niggas outside, you know, the ones that just didn't come here, you know, the ones that are not. They see this building, they come near this room, they feel, oh, there's too much conscious shit going on. They, they feel it. They un you know, it's, it's, it's not as unknown, it's unconscious to them. When they see a conscious brother wearing onks, whatever, whatever, they cross the street, someone just don't look at you. You understand? Because they fear this. They see this, they go, oh, that's that. Let me get away from that motherfucker. You understand? But you can rock crucifixes all day. You understand what I mean? <clears throat> By keeping the masses distracted and spooked, the soulless parasites drain and feed on your unused dark matter potential. 
these brain dead niggas, sleepwalkers, has become the battery that fuels this third dimensional spiritual prison. All right, where the sleepwalkers are the inmates and the soulless parasites are the wardens and CEOs, the own corporations of dark matter vampirism. That they're just like vampires. Um, another thing I want to speak on dealing with the draining and sucking of your energy. It's these two. Watch your head when I stop this. It's going to drop a little bit. Okay. Succubus and Incubus. First, Succubus. Succubus is a demon or entity that takes the form of a female to seduce men in their dreams. Through sex, they drain the life force from the men to sustain themselves, often to the point of exhaustion or death. In this case, spiritual death. Incubus is the male counterpart of the succubus, a demon or entity that takes the form of a man and seduces and drains the life force, the chi energy, the chi energy, out of women until exhaustion or death, spiritual death. All right? Unlike vampires, these secret societies, soulless parasites, succubus, incubus, have maintained a non-sexual, indirect method of draining and feeding on the dark matter energy or your soul magic in order to keep the next generation of sleepwalkers spiritually incarcerated and mentally raped. So in order to keep shit going, you understand, like I'm 32, I have two sons. They're going to be the next generation in which they indoctrinate and mentally fuck your children. So I have to let them see both sides of the situation. Let them see the video. Then break the science on the video. Because they have to go to school where they hear this shit. They see this shit every day. So you're going to have to show them the bullshit. Then break shit down for them on a real level. You're, you're going to have to relate to your kids. You can't just, oh, don't, fuck it. Don't watch it. Don't watch it. Well, yeah, watch BET. But analyze the shit and break it down for your kids. Because you can't keep them locked in. They're going to go outside. They're going to play with their friends. The friends going to, you know, know. All of this bullshit. You understand what I'm saying? And next thing you know, they get beat over the head with some bullshit, bring it in the house. And next thing you know, they disrespect you. You wonder why. You say, well, I wonder why. I keep them away from the BT and all the dumb shit. And the... Yeah, but you're not showing them. Because this is what their friends are into. This is who they con uh, interact with. So they're going to bring this home. And it's up to you to show them both sides. You can't just be one-sided with this shit. You have to break it down on both sides. You understand? That's how you get into the baby's head. That's how you get into these kids' head. You got to show them both sides. Bring the science to them on both levels so they can get it. They don't get it because you're coming from just one point. And, and, and they be like, what the fuck you talking about? That shit don't relate to me. So they have to invent and come up with holographic, new holographic identities. Hologram. Third, the, uh, third density. We're living in it right now. This skin, this body, this is a hologram used for us to interact and to experience the experience that God left for us, the most high, left for us on this planet. That, that is living your life for uh, the, us on a conscious level. We're put here to elevate on a certain level of consciousness. Everything else is just a fucking illusion. Yeah, we go to work, we do this, we do that. This is just an astronaut suit. You understand? This is just an astronaut. That's why they're here to dream what's in you. And I ain't, well, we ain't using it. The holograms are being put in reality shows, BET, all this other shit. And we take it in. We become part of that hologram. It takes over our total being and we get sucked in.
one. Sure, God, you got it. You know what I'm saying? They were almost all excited. Uh, Christian, you know, the whole shit. Christian Muslim, uh, 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 Buddhism, all these stuff are stepping stones. All these things are stepping stones to, towards your total spirituality. You understand? When we talk about religions, when we talk about religions, that means to rely on their legions. To rely on their legions. And you become one of them. And you pull other brothers and sisters in. And now you got the homo thug in the corner with his buddies. And you got these bitches on the side. Where my queens? Where my goddesses at? In my era, it was the shit to learn your lessons. It was the shit to be enlightened and sharpen swords with brothers and sisters that can sharpen you mentally. You understand? And spread the knowledge of yourself. To know yourself on this planet. And you can go elsewhere and do what you do, but understand that your foundation, the basics, you understand? Dr. Henry Clark, Dr. Ben, you understand? They are forefathers that grounded us and taught us who we really are. We must not lose sight of that, no matter what. They don't want that. They put the shit in on the TV, this, that, and the third. I've seen a lot of conscious brothers fall. You understand what I mean? Fall, just fall off. Because they, they, they want this, they want that, they want to, you know what I mean? They say, fuck it, I'm broke, you know what I'm saying? Let me go and do this, let me go and do it. And they get sucked into that type of lifestyle. You understand what I'm saying? It, it's, it's rough, but this is why we call warriors. You understand what I'm saying? We'll find a way, but we ain't going for the dumb shit. You understand? And, and we have to be versatile when we do these things. You have to know certain things. Islam, Christianity. I could talk to a Christian and not get in an argument. Just talk. Maybe drop a little gem on him, walk away. You might have a dream on or something, hit the lot or whatever. You know what I mean? But the key here is to be versatile in your approach. You know what I'm saying? It's not about going to work. Fuck the white man. Blend in. You won't go home stressful and, 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 you know, or you got to go to the gym, hit on a bag to get rid of the stress. You know what I'm saying? Get an aneurysm or something. Die. Shit. You didn't complete your mission. You come back on this plane only to do the same shit again. You know what I'm saying? Go to work. Be humble. You know who you are. You ain't got to be arrogant with your shit. Just, you know what I'm saying? You come home, get your paycheck. You can relax. Build your own empire in your own home. You ain't got to build nobody else's empire, but you got to be there to get money. I mean, you got to make money. You got to make money. That's, you know what I mean? That's the way it is on this third density bullshit that we live in. All right? This hologram. And now what's cool, this thug mentality shit, this is what gets me. When I'm asking these young kids, right, where I work, they have summer youth, Okay? Now, a bunch of these kids are already infected with this BET bullshit, you understand? And they come in, one dude got his pants off his ass. You understand? Pants off his ass. Hat turned to the back. This is a job you come into. Understand? You, you got to move. You got to get in there and just, you know, you have to have different masks. I used to have locks. They say, well, why you cut your locks? I tell them this, and then I walk off. A warrior. A warrior, spiritual warrior, changes his armor in an ever-changing battleground. You understand? There's certain levels of of uh, of aesthetics that people just love to have. You know, gotta have this, gotta have them spinners, gotta have this, gotta have that. Certain things I could do without and keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? I'm a simple dude, but. You got people that got to have this and got to have that, and they get sucked in once again. So I asked the brother, I'm, you know, we um, break time, we listen to music, r and I asked the brother, I said, well, do you take your girlfriend out to dance? I said, dance? I don't dance. I think I'm a dog. This is what he told me. I'm like, whoa. 
I said, whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I said, whoa. I said, don't you know part of being a fan is knowing cosmic rhythm, is knowing how to dance. Ain't nothing wrong with that. When you get older, you're going to want women, but you're going to have to know how to dance. You're going to have to tap into that side of you that taps into the cosmic element of rhythm. That's who we are. You got to get in there and just shout some merengue, reggae, whatever. You understand? This is who we are. Back in the 70s, it was chill. You go to joints, nobody shooting, whatever. It's drained from us, you understand? And these babies are living corpses. Examples showing you, hey, listen, I'm a thug. Yeah, you're a thug, but what do you have to prove to yourself? What, what, where are you going with it? Look at yourself a year from now, two years. They ain't living like that day by day because they see the shit. But see, then again, we push the envelope now because we let them stroke our emotions. Grown ass man. My brother, myself, we went out dancing with some female, beautiful women. Bunch of cats come in, sitting on the wall. They ain't looking at the women because it was like five women to one man in there. That's how packed it was with female, beautiful sisters. They looking at us. That's the homo thug. Right, <laughs> right. They looking at us. <laughs> So, my brother dancing. Dude bump him while he dancing. My brother turned around and said, oh, yo, listen, my man, all these women in here, why you bump me? What's the problem? <laughs> I mean, let's be real, what's the problem? You see these beautiful women right here? All these beautiful women in the house, you bump me. Are you gay, you faggot, you and your faggots over there want to fuck or something? What's the problem? I mean, real talk. I'm, I'm just chilling to the side. I'm waiting for some blows to have because, you know, we, we can do that. But the whole thing was about he couldn't dance. He couldn't step to a girl. He don't have the heart to step to a girl. Do you want to dance? Simple as that. Yo, 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 yo. Come on. Is this the approach? You understand? This is just the thug approach. It cuts you off from being a man, is what I'm saying. You, 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 you're not versatile. You, you, can't, you don't know how, when you go downtown, how to, how to be. You understand? This is a war. You don't, you, you're dead. You don't know how to mingle and mix and, 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 and change your armor. You fucked. And this is exactly where they want you. They want you in that street corner cell block. They want you there. They, they, even in the mind, it's pigeonhole. You hanging with this dude, hanging with that dude. I want to do some music. I want to, you know what I'm saying? I want to teach. What nigga? Fuck out of here. You ain't even you ain't even graduate. What the fuck you ain't even teaching? This the this the this the bullshit. This the programming. You understand? This the programming. If I'm hanging with you. We supposed to be boys. You supposed to congratulate me because I want to do something other than the same dumb shit, same program, third density bullshit that we've been locked down into the hologram. That's how you could tell who's your boys, who's not your boys. This is the same thing. And and getting back to the word thug. The original thugs were called tugs, and these were people involved, the you know, white Arabs, Napoleons, uh, 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 you understand, the Greeks, Romans. These are the people that went to the pyramids, not just in Egypt, South America, Mexico, you understand? And they would tug on ropes and chains to pull the ancient artifacts, your history, out of them pyramids, tugs. And then they were called thugs later on, due to this beautiful, you know, Germanic Roman language that we speak. It's not English. It's Latin. Latin Greek. But then you got some of our Spanish brothers and sisters call themselves Latin. But you get that shit from the Roman Empire. 
brothers and sisters from the Caribbean. I'm Jamaican. No, you're not. You're a black man that reside in Jamaica. It's plain and simple. You call yourself Jamaican? No, that's something that Eng England came over there and said, well, listen, we're going to call this shit Jamaican. Y'all Jamaicans now. Whatever you used to call you, the ancient shit that you used to call yourself, don't exist here. You got brothers on dread, this, that, and the third, boom, boom, boom. Wearing a coin with Queen Elizabeth on the motherfucker. <laughs> Type of shit is that? They see me walk back, walk, boom, boom, boom. I could talk to Rastafarian, whoever. Don't matter. Because I know my history from all angles. I know my science from all angles. And I'm still learning because I'm, a, I'm still a student. So the, these holographic identities serves as an anesthetic blindfold. Impairing the inner visions, putting master locks on your first eye. When I say first eye, I'm talking about what we call the third eye. But the third eye, is, that's twisted. When you are a baby, when you first come out, you can't see with these two physical eyes. This is your first eye. You see spiritually first. You understand? Numbing down your higher sciences while the feast of dark matter energy is ritualistically executed every day. It's like the movie Blade. You got these vampires that disguise themselves as regular humans. And they come... You know, and they, yo, you want to go to this joint? It's, it's hot, man. They got this, they got that, they got girls. You know, you need to come through. They get mad people come through. Music start pumping, everything. Who saw the movie Blade? Who know what I'm talking about? Music start pumping. The next thing you know, blood starts coming out the sprinklers. And everybody like, yo, what the fuck? Next thing you know, the same motherfuckers that invited them were vampires. And they were the fools. They were the feast. This is what they do. In the movie industry, music industry, I, I like to focus on those two because that is where we get our identities from. Rappers get their identities from watching movies, gangster flicks, you know what I mean? And it trickles into the music industry. Talking about the music and movie industry, you have directors, actors who are part of this cult, who are part of this, I like to say, pseudo occultist group. All right? Like uh, any actor, you can name them. They all wear black. Rock stars wear black. They wear black because they're trying to synthesize the melanin that they don't have. They walk around with all black. They even walk around, some of them walk around with onks and shit. They know your science better than you do. They do the homework, they put it in the movies, they put it in the music, even heavy metal, heavy metal, rock music. Again, conscious community or even, you know, the average dead brain dead motherfucker walking the street. When I start to talk about certain topics, when I say, okay, do you listen to heavy, how many people in here listen to heavy metal rock? That's how you should be, because our shit is all over. All right, I'm about to get into that later. But they synthesize your melanin when they wear black. All right, and these actors, uh, Angelina Jolie, Madonna, all these people are cultists. And, and Madonna had a what a Kabbalah uh, a movement. You understand what I mean? And it was exclusively for actors, rock stars, anybody in the industry. Because these are the these are the uh, uh, agents for the for the for the uh, for these soulless agents. You understand what I'm saying? These are the agents of these the, the soulless parasites. They're agents. So they wear a lot of black, and they worship Lucifer. This is where it gets scary. This is where it gets scary. They worship Lucifer. When I say Lucifer, what's the first thing on your mind? Huh? The devil. Okay. Lucifer. Lucifer. 
Lucifer means light bearer. Light bearer. The illuminated one. Exactly. Alright. If you crack open your Bible, first of all, we could take this back to the Nicene Council. Italy, Rome, the Vatican. This is at a time when they was restructuring your history. They went to the pyramids, tried to cut off the nose, carve off the noses, tried to fuck up the appearance of your godly stature, who you are. So we can't go back and see ourselves, but it didn't work too well, too well because we worked with limestone. We were scientists back in those days. We knew that they was going to try and fuck some shit up. We knew that we wanted our shit preserved, so we did it in limestone, which is the hardest substance, archaeological substance on this planet. One of. So when they was doing this, they, they got together, Italy, and they said, well, listen, we need to restructure everything. The hieroglyphs, everything. And they formulated certain parts of the Bible. And in there, they said, well, listen, we're going to twist shit around. We're going to make the black culture, black history, all that shit seem evil. So now when slavery came about, niggas was hitting the head with that Bible so fast, your head was spinning to the point where they start bowing down to some white Jesus because they believed that black was evil, that they were punished. This is a punishment. This is a fucking blessing. So when I say Lucifer, all this shit here, Lucifer, the devil, 666, those are all your tools. This is you. This is your power. Exactly. This is your power. They use against you. The Pope has a secret room with Isis and Osiris bow down to all the time before he does his opening speeches, whatever you want to call them, and give you some Jesus shit. He has 12, 12 cardinals around him wearing black. He wears white. He's the light. They're the darkness. Yin and yang. Balance. This is all your science. So when we talk about Lucifer, we, what are we talking about? When you crack open that Bible, Genesis, Lucifer was the first revolutionary. He said, fuck that shit. Fuck all of this God shit. What the fuck is that about? He came as a serpent. Serpent is kundalini energy. It's symbolic of your kundalini energy rising through your spinal cord. He's also a symbol of the Grand Dragon. Grand Dragon were called Nagas back in Indus Kush. This is where you get India. Before it was called India. And now it's nigger. Nagas nigger. You are the Grand Dragon. When they had it, the, the Chinese have something what they call the, the, the Lion Dance. The Lion Dance, they will form a, a big festival because the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Dragon Dance was very sacred to them. Dragon, any serpent in, uh, in, in overseas in Asia, it was wisdom, you understand, power, and the derivative of the reptilian energy of God. This is what they saw. So your symbolism is all over. So when they do that, li uh, that, that, that dragon dance, even a lion, they're talking about you. They talking about you. So when they say nigga, nigga in the street, the unconscious motherfucker would say nigga in the street because that's what they throw at them. But when you get on a conscious level, you have to see from both sides. Yeah, nigga is, is used negatively. But at the same time now, that, that, they talking about you, the Nagas, the Grand Dragons, the, the Grand Serpent, Lucifer. This is all you. Don't be scared. So Lucifer was your first revolutionary that came to Adam and Eve and offered them knowledge of themselves and said, listen, you ain't got to follow this Jehovah bullshit. Because all of this shit was crafted for you to be blind and walk around stumbling on shit. You know what I'm saying? Sleepwalkers, Adam and Eve were sleepwalkers. Lucifer said, yo, listen, take a bite of this fruit, and I'm going to set you free. Wait a minute, we're going to get question and answer. 
And they made that seem negative to you because they set the tone as soon as you crack open that Bible. They the ones who orchestrated certain scriptures in there that have you going into praising white Jesus. And you understand? Kumbaya, everything is going to be cool. Meanwhile, you motherfuckers are draining you, sucking you dry. You don't feel it because you're not spiritual enough to feel it. When you see pictures of Lucifer, any picture, whatever, he's red, usually red, black, dark, you understand? Horns, tail, whatever, the whole, the whole shit. Again, a depiction to fear who you are. You know what I mean? Look at the skin and say, well, I'm cursed. You know what I'm saying? In all actuality, you are blessed. And the tone that they set in the Bible will have you think otherwise. You have to know occult science. You have to know metaphysics to really break down the Bible. You can't get it from going to church and listen to Reverend Fatback talk shit about one verse in the Bible and they'll keep doing it around the same verse. You understand? They talk about all this other shit instead of getting to the meat of the situation because they went to seminary school to drain you of your spiritual energy. Your soul is on a 99 cent sale and they're buying. So when we talk about melanin, when we talk about Prince of Darkness and all this other stuff. You're referring to melanin. Speak of Mel, talking about the carbon. Carbon intelligence, or car, K-A-R which is an occult reference to Osiris or Lucifer. Mel also goes into Melchizedek, which is called the green one, el Kader, which also is a higher form of melanin called chlorophyll. It's in plants. La is the feminine side of El, El Elo, El Elohim, God. Nen which is Nun, which is the primordial waters. It's the creation of the material realm. Also, before we were in this astronaut suit, we were nothing but pure energy. Formlessness, cosmic intelligence. Nun also represent the womb waters. So fellas, you hit that spot right, and she start to come, drink it. It's like the fun youth. To preserve their presence and control and domination over our cult sciences, the soulless societies of parasites perform the succubi and incubi rituals. This is drawing and feeding on your dark matter energy. Uh, a prime example, Madonna, Angelina Jolie. And I know most of us was like, why the, why the fuck they go to Africa and all these other places to adopt babies, these babies? It is not on a premise of saving lives and all this other shit. Like, oh, most of us would say, out there I'm hearing, well, in Africa, it's not, it's not a lot of opportunities out there. They're dying of AIDS, this and the third. So they're going to save the babies, right? It's bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Madonna, like I said earlier, Madonna, Angelina Jolie, Madonna is the, she, they picked her to play the dark mother, which is Isis, Lilith. During her music career, she was to reenact the three stages of the dark goddess, all right? That is the virgin, the harlot, and the crone. When we talk about the virgin, Talking about you know Mary in the Bible, who is the Madonna, who is Isis? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Then she, after that, about two years after that, she starts springing into some sexual shit. Just start fucking everybody. Because that and back in Kim, we used to have 
rituals where we used to just fuck like crazy, but on a on a spiritual level though. Get into your Kama Sutra. Get into yoga. If I say, yo, where you going, bro? I'm going to yoga class. Nigga, that's some faggot shit. Get the fuck out of my face with that shit. That is your science. Yoga prepared you for the spiritual science called the Kama Sutra. You get in these different positions. You do the breaths. Trust me, it works. You, I mean, I mean, when they say men don't catch orgasms, yeah, right. Get into it, it's something else. When we talk about the crone, we're talking about the, the witch that doesn't menstruate anymore. The menstruation fluid, the waters are none, the Red Sea. When you're dispensing blood, you're losing out on certain intelligence. You have entities that live in your bloodstream, certain entities. And these entities show themselves during every 28 days or so when women, you know, sisters menstruate. And sisters catch attitudes when... Once, and then first they cool, and then you know they want to stab you in the back. Or next thing you know, they, you know they choking the shit out of you, cursing you. You know you gotta leave. Take some chamomile tea, smoke, smoke some herb. Go in the next room, whatever. These are these entities that are interacting with her during that time, and she must understand that that is her most powerful time to do your rituals, your voodoo, protective energy, right? Like the brother said, the waxing and waning the moon. Pulls the tides, pulls and pushes the tides. So it pulls and pushes the emotions, the current of emotions, these entities or energies inside of the womb of the woman. So therefore, she reacts to it. She is a catalyst or a doorway for these spirits, these entities. And they're speaking right through her. If she channel it just right, she can tell you what's going on from the other side straight up. And for brothers who don't have, you know, who don't have sisters by their side, queens, goddesses at their side like that, we can tap into them. I'm going to show you how later. When we speak of Angelina Jolie, we're speaking of the Tomb Raider. This is the thug, the tug that I spoke on, the archaeologists, uh, uh, the anthropologists, the scientists. Every day they're working on new ways to keep you confused and Filled with illusions. They try to block your higher vibration from reaching those other doorways where you can get your inspiration from, where you could be creative once again. Where you, this is where you don't need this third density. Stand, create this hologram. But they keep you dependent on it, like welfare. They keep you dependent on it. You must be dependent on this system. And if you're in the system, I am, I got to work, but, you know, I hustle righteously on the side. You know what I mean? I got my T-shirt, heavy, mental. We're going to science about that later. There's things that I do to get other income, to build my own empire. So this way, when time comes, I don't need to be back on the plantation. But it's in gradual steps. You got brothers that just fuck the job, nigga. Fuck that shit. Conscious, but you have to understand there's different levels of consciousness, and you got but fuck that. Now what you gonna do? You gonna live off your girl? You gonna live off your queen? You understand? You have to be independent. If you are God, you are self-sufficient. Angelina Jolie represents the Tomb Raider, the thug, the tugs. They're trying to shut you down from getting to Series A, Series B, all these alternative worlds. But Angelina Jolie and Madonna are an example. It's just an example of what the Vatican been doing for centuries. They've been going to Africa, sending missionaries over there, raping the little boys and girls over there. And this goes back to the succubus and incubus, draining the energy. 
at a certain age when your child from 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 the time they out of that womb up until the age of seven they're constantly connected to the cosmic intelligence when the baby's first born you walk in the room and they playing with somebody in there you don't know who the fuck it is you're like what the what the fuck I'm right here. You waving over there. My baby blind. Like, nah. They seeing spirits. They communicate. This is communion. Fuck church. This is communion. You already can't. You already uh, uh, in there. Etherically. The baby is speaking, playing with spirits from the other side. This is why they have to cut that off. This is why Madonna and them is getting these babies at certain ages. You never see them adopting a full, you know, teenage child, you know, or, or you know, any, any, any child over the age of seven, they don't want. They want the newborn. They want this, the, the, you know, the, the young child. They want to snatch them out of the young so they can drain them. It's like ripe fruit. So by the time these kids reach a certain age, they're agents. They, they suck dry. They have no options. They're aging. And like I spoke on earlier, when we become conscious, when we become that warrior, I had a brother come up to me and told me, tell me, he's conscious, he come up to me and tell me, look, I've been having trouble at the job, you know. I said, what happened? He says, well, I built with some people at the job. I said, are they conscious? Are they on your level? He said, no, nah, I was just trying to, you know, just give them something. You can't do that. That's, that's a no-no. That's a big no-no. I mean, I've done it. This was years ago. I've done it. I was, uh, what, what was it, uh, a leader of a hate group. I was written up, brought on Chuck. It was the whole, it, it was drama. This was years ago. This is when I was like, fuck that. Fuck the system, you know? So I learned from experience. This is experience. And when he was talking to me about that, I was like, yo, that was me years ago. So I know what I'm, ta- I know what I'm talking about. Trust me. So he goes, yeah, well, you know, I built with some people and I was just trying to give them a little information. And what happened? He goes, I got written up. You know, they went back and told the super. Some of them couldn't handle it. They went back, told the supervisor. They thought I was a double worshiper and all this. And every time I come to work, I got to deal with all these people in my face and you know, how they look at me. This that. You got to be on your stealth mode. You have to be in stealth mode from the moment you probably leave this building. You understand? Because you don't know. Who's watching you? You don't know who's, you understand? And at the same time now, you have to be up on your level. You have to be up on your guard energy to analyze shit as you walk. Because they will drain you. And then there's another thing, infiltration. They do it to us every day. They go uptown. These crackers, they go uptown. Like right now, on the weekend, they go into the black churches. They sit there, you understand? And they absorb all the shit that that Reverend Fatback is talking you understand? And they, and they go back. And they do their little reports or whatever. And you have some that's genuinely genuine there just to absorb the energy that comes out of there. But then you have some that absorb that energy and use it against you. Occultists. These are white occultists that's come uptown, sit there, absorb the shit. Then we're like, all right, nigga, we got you. I have some, I have some, 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 uh, Parasites that live right next door to me, upstairs from me. Their very presence is raising my rent, but I realize why they're there. <laughs> you understand? When they step in, step up to me, say, "All right, nigga, we gonna we gonna live around here. Fuck that." But then when I was urging brothers, "Hey, listen, they hustle on the street. They got some. I mean, you know, I'm an artist. I paint." So I go from Harlem downtown 14th Street and I see the shit that goes on. And if you look at the history of New York period, they brought us here beginning with downtown. We got it twisted. Our history began downtown before going uptown Harlem. They brought us 
They lined us up in Wall Street. You understand? Checking you out. Yeah, this nigga is worth such and such. You put that in the stock. We became livestock before there was ever investment stocks. Go down and check that shit out. It ain't just the little spot that they claim that's his, uh, what they say, African burial ground. That shit is all over Manhattan. All over Manhattan. Upstate New York, too. We used to, you know, they used to have our, our ancestors of upstate slaving. You understand? All, all over New York. And I tell brothers, listen, you know, go downtown, get that money downtown. You know what I'm saying? You have to be interchangeable and versatile. Like I said, you got brothers too much pride. Oh, on the weekdays, hustle here. Go downtown on the weekends. Or oh, weekends, you stay, you know what I mean? Take a couple of days going downtown. Yeah, they buying your shit. But at the same time now, economics. You got to pay rent. You got brothers that, you know, fuck it, I ain't made no money today. These niggas ain't buying shit. Go downtown. Take that part too. Let, let them know. Hey, yeah, we here too, nigga. We here too. This is our shit here too. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be versatile in your approach. Family members also, sleepwalkers, agents. All right, what we're going to get into now is um, spiritual self-defense, what I call spiritual self-defense. Um, this particular ritual is for protection, especially in, the, in today's times. You're conscious, but, you know, sometimes you feel drained or something is fucked up with you. You're just not, you know, on your levels. Crystals, like amethyst, tiger eye, amber, I mean, I don't have a whole lot of bibliography today because... You know, we got a schedule to maintain, so um, I'm going to speak on this again in other lectures. Um, crystals, like amethyst, that's uh, the purplish white crystal. Sometimes it's yellowish purple. Uh, that that taps into your, your right brain hemisphere, which is more spiritual. That pulls the spiritual energy out of you. Tiger eye, which is for protection, that's the brownish uh, type of... Uh, stone that looks like an eye through the reflection of the room wherever, wherever, you know, wherever tight, however the light hits it alright amber that's like a yellowish orange stone has little bubbles in it uh, basically it's like some sort of uh, a sap or a gel that comes from ancient trees and you usually see like little bugs in there the ones with the bugs those are the most ancient those are the most powerful alright that it's for higher thought, higher mind. All right. Quartz, which is a clear crystal, is usually mainly used for clarity, clarity, cleansing. That's just a few. Um, like I said, time constraints, you know, you get into it at a later time. Uh, ways to recharge or to bless your stones would be uh, oil use such as frankincense. Uh, any type of, I mean, uh, lavender, uh, you can use, uh, herbs, like you light up some sage and you can say an affirmation or a mantra over that particular stone. You're blessing it or recharging it or programming it just like a microchip. You're programming the talisman. Yep. Um, affirmations, make it your own. Protective deities that you that you want to come in, that you call. And by the way, these entities are deities. They're inside of you already. Isis, the statues of Isis, all the great deities. They're an example of yourselves, your DNA. They they in you. This is just an outside representation, so you can look and say, okay, that what 
that might represent something inside of me. You know what I'm saying? All of these deities are in you, and you can pull them out at any given time. Your personality plays certain key roles. When you get upset and you just you just want to fuck something up, that's that warrior. That's that Haru Kahuti in you. You feeling corny and you want to, you know, you feeling sexual, you know, with your lady, the goddess, you know, that's that Venus energy in you. So forth and so on. Rituals for protection. Get a white shark or anything uh, that you can see visible. You draw a magic circle on the ground, floor, wherever you're at. You go in the park late night, nobody around. You write the names of the protective deities, Haruka Hudi, one, uh, Kali Yuga, another one. Uh, a lot, there's a lot of them. But you do the research and you write the entity's name around the circle. When you step into the circle, you're going to read your affirmation, say your affirmation, your mantra. If you're not into affirmations, is a mantra. Mantra are power words that you repeat like a chant. And you say it over and over and over and over and over again. You begin to feel lighter. That's when you know that energy is being channeled right. You get a white candle. You can put it anywhere with, around the circle. Certain colors of the candle... When you light it, the light, uh, the fire is an accelerator, so it accelerates the rate of vibration within that color. Colors are vibrations, vibrations are energies. You pull in a certain entity that is attracted to that particular color, red, white, blue, whatever color you're working with. Again, time constraints, we get into the color coding and all that at a later date. You say your mantra or your affirmation over and over and over again. You can close your eyes or open your eyes. Till you feel light. You should be feeling like you're floating a little. That's when you know it's working. About two, two to five minutes. You step outside the circle and you say a closing ritual. This is a closing ritual. You must close anything you open. Say that again, bro. You must close anything that you open. You got a lot of people that do rituals, but they do rituals and they don't close out the ceremony. They don't close out. You understand? They don't close out the, the, the ritual. So as you step out the circle, you blow out the candle. You say, it is done. I say, it is done. Anything to that effect. You know, this is just my presentation on what need to be said at the particular point when I'm closing out. Okay, but you could, like, again, creativity is the key here. If you're conscious, you study, you could formulate your own mixture. We creative gods and goddesses sitting right in this room. We create shit. You understand? We created Lotto. It was, it was just a neighborhood number game that we used to play. Until they said, oh, word. Let me take that. He's cracking. Let me take that. Now they got a lotto. So now it's illegal for you to run numbers now. To play numbers. This is your creativity. Elevators, toilet bowls. Yeah, we did that. Cell phones. We did that too. They took it. Copyright, all this legal shit. They fuck us out of our own inventions and shit. We create shit just waking up yawning. We don't realize it. They copyright the way you walk. They make money off the shit. I laugh. This is the shit. I'm trying to tell you. But realize what it is. 
realize what it is. <clears throat> Fellas, we can do these rituals with or without because I know a lot of brothers, conscious brothers, have trouble finding a suitable goddess. Like I said earlier, uh, it's best to do these rituals during a full moon or two or three days after because the effects are still lasting. Sisters are doorways to the spirit realm. That's why back in ancient times, the woman was the foundation, the backbone. That's why when you look at any picture in Kim, any, any pharaoh sitting on the throne with his goddess, his goddess is on the side or behind. And usually these feminist groups would say now, that's, that, that, that is disrespecting the feminine principle. No, it's not. This is science. She's standing behind the brother to give him support. The spinal column. Without the spine, you just be a whole bunch of jelly walking around, just blobbing around. There's no support. Without support, you are nothing. Exactly. But that's what I'm saying. But I'm just saying is that when you look at some of these pictures where the goddess is behind, it's showing you a particular science. And of course, we got pictures with the goddess standing side by side. But I'm tapping into the unknown realm that we don't know. Either we we just don't look at it. The side by side, of course. But that's the known. I'm tapping into the unknown realms here. Alternative to the shit hop, the hip hop. You tired of this shit? I'm tired of this shit on the radio too. But I gotta analyze this shit so I can feed my babies with the proper mental nourishment. I'm tired of listening to that shit. You tired? I'm tired. We all tired as adults. Let's okay. Let's go into something else. Let's go into these certain genres. If we understand and analyze that hip hop music is a melting pot of different genres, rock, jazz, blues, R&B. Let's tap into the origins of each genre, like jazz, for instance, Coltrane, Miles Davis, Ellington. All of these are grandmasters, fathers, architects of bebop. Bebop, we look at bebop, B. Bop. Bop is a certain signature, a certain signature that breaks the barriers of the mundane sound, mundane sound waves to create our own realities and to pull it back into this third density so this way we can all share the elevational experience. We can all tap into it. It's done telepathically. There's no talking. There's no singing. It was just notes, vibration flowing through you, and you can tap in automatically. There's no speaking of it, there's no books to read. Nah, it's automatic. And if you're ready for that trip, you take the trip. And you realize what those brothers was laying down. They were musical geniuses. The arrangements, the tones, manipulating the vibration of sound, invoking the muse. When we're speaking of the muse, we're speaking of inspiration. To inspire. Spirit. Uh, right now we're gonna get into slide presentation. We're gonna hook this up.
gonna show you the muse. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you a material representation that is already inside of you. When we went over to India, in this Kush, we laid down the sciences of Tantra, yoga, music. Egypt was considered the right-hand path, the masculine. The left-hand path was the feminine. So we had, even though it was invaded, but we were going to do it anyway. We was going to come over and lay it down, lay down the balance. So in this Kush or India was the left-hand path. Give me a You got your Ethernet card in here, and yeah, I'm already yeah. zoning online already. Now, I'm, uh, we're going to have to probably restart it so that the uh, right. projector can pick it up. So just... No problem. You can keep building. All right, no problem. Um, the picture I was going to show y'all was an ancient representation of the muse. Um, You sitting at home, whatever you get into, weed, whatever. But the, today's weed is kind of bullshit. Phil last time was spoken on, speaking on Ayahuasca, which again, when I go downtown, I, I get this, all this information because I'm infiltrating. I'm, I'm, I'm using them to up my levels. We tend to, like books, for instance. You got brothers that are that are revolutionary and conscious as well, but they have a limited view on t what to elevate off of. So I, they said, brother, what, what book you reading? I said, well, this is a book by so forth and so on, a white author, but he has our sciences. I get, bro, why you reading that bullshit? It's a white author, fuck him. You know what I'm saying? Would the black author is too good for you? No, brother, I read everything, just like music. Listen to everything. Can't cut yourself off. So he was telling me about the Ayahuasca. He was telling me, he was looking at my artwork and saying, well, yeah, this is nice. This is nice. And he was just analyzing some of my shit. And I'm like, okay, he knows. But then he was like, well, let me tell you something. You want to tap in even on a higher creative level? You could get some air wesca. Get some air wesca. He was telling me what to do with it, how to prepare it, and everything. And he says, I tried it. But, you know, he's a cracker, so it's, it's, limited, it's a limited trip for him. You know what I'm saying? His experience is not my experience. When I tap in, I pull in something even greater or something different than what he's saying. But he was telling me about the air wesca. He was telling me how to get it. I wrote it down as he was talking. When I find it out, I'll let y'all know in a, a later lecture. He had a website with the Air West guy, how to get it, who to get it from. You understand? They were importing this shit. In small, in small amounts, but they were importing this shit. Oh, you better on, kid. All right. And Air West was one of those herbs that the shamans would use. To tap in when they're doing the, the, the rituals. You understand? We do have an Um, picture viewer. Uh, that in nah, I can find it. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Uh, bear with me. Oh, uh, no, not this. Uh, no, you keep the. Y'all can see the screen, right? All right. No, you keep the lights on. All right. Can 
you see it with the camera? Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm trying to light sound. I didn't know if you could hook up just a better view. All right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Okay, this is a physical representation of the Aspara. Aspara was another name for the Muse. In this Kush, which is now India, the Aspara, you see here, you have the four goddesses dancing on lotus petals. Oh, give me one minute. Dancing on the lotus petals. The lotus flower itself is a, how, how many of you ever saw a, a chart of your your chakras the chakras the chakras were represented as lotus petals lotus flowers meaning blossoming internal life force energy what they call prana back in india prana pranic energy all right and as they're dancing you see they they're wearing the crowns on the head which represents the crown chakra meaning ascension. We go into other gateways and different wormholes to make these discoveries, these brainstorms, and we come back with jazz, R&B, hip hop, whatever. some shit and I didn't know what it was but when we talk about George Clinton and Parliament Funkadelic we talking about musical forerunners of our cosmic history dropping the science of ascension higher dimension thought into the music the spaceship represents the pyramid capstone the crown chakra the title the mothership connection that's what it speaks on us going into the mother planes the origin of material creation, the plane of the formless, the triple black. So when you see them dress the way they used to dress, they used to wear pampers on stage with big ass flashlights and shit. But that was that was a way for them to express themselves to explain a, a specific science. These were sciences doing the work on stage. You ain't just hear the music. If you, re if you really <clears throat> wanted to know why Dre 3000 dressed the way he dressed. He's going into the Parliament Funkadelic era. The blonde wigs and all this shit. Like, what the fuck is wrong with this nigga? Now, all this other shit on the physical level, I don't deal with. Whatever uh, brothers get into, you know, on that bullshit, I I'm not concerned with that. I'm concerned with the science. I'm a scientist. I analyze and I, I bring the science to the people. We get caught up in the physicality of shit when we start to when we start to get too physical. You can appreciate the music without being attached to the person. You understand what I'm saying? I can appreciate certain things that come out of today's music because I analyze the Little John, the crunk music, because that takes me back to that taps you into the root chakra. That taps you into that tantric sex. That taps you into, so if you use it properly. I'm not talking about the, the, uh, the, the, the visual shit that you see. I'm talking about the energy that comes out of it. You can analyze all this shit and pull away with something, you understand what I'm saying, to explain the situation that they don't even know what's going on. They just using this particular certain costume that they wear, certain things, because a certain homo 
faggot in the industry say, well, listen, throw that on. Put that on. You know what I mean? And they wear it and they, and they say, well, say, say ballin' in your video. Say ballin'. So that's, that's, that's the shit. They, they suggest these certain innuendos, these certain nuances. And really, if you, ta- if you tap in properly, you, you can analyze exactly what they're saying. That they don't know. But these occultists, these pseudo-occultists in the industry know what the fuck they're doing. And niggas don't give a shit because niggas want to get paid, right? This next picture is Earth, Wind, and Fire. Masters of comedic representation. Presence within the muse. Fusing the comedic principles and esoteric mystery school lessons through jazz, funk, and soul rhythms. These brothers was off the hook. I got them right now on my MP3. You understand? She's crazy. Philip Bailey. Reasons. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's, come on, man. This, this is this is this is a remedy to the shit hop. Go back, and then come back and listen to this shit, and you see the difference. And then you see ways that you could have alternatives other than listening to that shit. This is how you tap into the chakras. This is how you tap into the kundalini energy. Like I said, it's done telepathically. The muse just hits you and you just do. Consciously or subconsciously, it will hit you. That's another rep- uh, strong representation of Haru. This is done in the 70s, y'all. 70s. Another representation. This is this is the type of CDs that y'all y'all pass by when y'all go into uh, Virgin Record Store, or whatever. Y'all just pass that shit by like fuck that. What the fuck is that? And you go straight to the Fifty Cent. Not us in here. I'm just talking about the usual dumbass, brain dead, zombified niggas outside. You pass that shit by. <laughs> That's right. Like I said, they they worship you, but secretly. They don't give a shit about the physical. Eye. They the only thing they they want from you is your energy because they don't have that. They are parasites, soulless parasites. So they're gonna use your ancient sciences on a dollar bill, but then you become slaves to that dollar. They're using your sciences against you. Exactly. And the wings mean ascension. Now we're going to talk about Jimmy. The grand wizard of electric elevation. And his guitar was a magic wand. He gave us lessons of etheric alignment, manipulating the vibratory rate, usually the mundane average sound structures, and created a wormhole to our evolution, growth. There's certain changes on this planet that's going to take place that, you know, that might allow you, your physical structures to change. Like I said, this is an astronaut suit, and we hold on to it too dearly. Yeah, you have to take care of it, clean it, make sure it looks good, all that. But once you realize and tap, really tap in and realize that this is an astronaut suit and you're a spiritual being, then a whole lot of possibilities can happen once you open up and tap in. And the music is the key. That's why they fucking with your music. Barry White, Gerald Levert, you understand? Jimi Hendrix, assassinated. I don't care nobody said they were assassinated. Because these were the people that was, the scientists that was tapping in to give you the inspiration, the aspira. They were helping you go in. And you see here, he has the deities behind him, and he himself came in as Kali Yuga with the many hands of destiny. Each hand represented a particular destiny, a particular path that we go into when we tap in.
Jimmy also was when he went during his interviews. They would ask him. He said, "Well, what explain uh, describe your music?" And he would say, "Well, there's no category for my music. My music is my religion." There's another picture. Remember when I said that you are the ancestors? The ancestors are you. They they live in your DNA. Look at the picture. See John Lee Hooker, BB King, Chubby Checker, Ike Turner. All these are pioneers of what of what hip hop music is supposed to be composed of. It was composed of that back in you know back in the early '90s when that was my era. You know what I'm saying? Late '80s, mid '90s. That was my era. That's that's my era of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I know about Grandmaster Cash. I know about Melly Melanin. I also know about, you know, brothers like Common, Most Def, Talib Kweli. You know what I'm saying? Brothers that still doing the work. Now we're going to get into heavy metal. We're going to get into the shit that we could talk about music on a conscious level, but now nah, this is the deeper, darker aspect that we don't go into. I ask, how many people li- listen to heavy metal? If you can't, if you can't stand the harmonics of the sound that they that they use, then read the lyrics, analyze the album covers, because they breaking down your science. They saying something, because ain't nothing new. They just showing you your science and making millions of dollars on it. They wear a lot of black. They worship Lucifer. Already broke that science down. They're talking about you on a cult level. When we look at this, you see the Caucasoid. And when I say about soulless parasites, when you look inside the face, you see a mummy, like a mummified emptiness in there. That's who they are. And they take off that mask and they show you who they really are. But on everyday life, they walk around, and you don't even notice who from who, but you realize that they're caucasoids, but they're much more than that. And you have different levels. And whether consciously or subconsciously, they're put here, whether they know it or not, they're put here to drain your energy. Vampires. Energy, dra- energy vampires. Soulless parasites. Now, I'm not saying don't converse with them or don't do... Yeah, converse with them. Find out their angles. Get the resources. You understand? Infiltrate. This is war. This is metaphysical and occult war. Infiltrate. But you got a lot of... I've seen... When I go down... I've seen brothers and sisters join these occult clubs. They wear all black. They wear the piercings, tattoos everywhere, this, that, and the third. I ain't knocking all that. What I'm knocking is the fact that this brother or sister is only one, usually one or two out of a whole bunch of these crackers and they walk the street, you know what I mean, down there. You get in with them and you, you do you do all these rituals and so forth and so forth with them, but you don't understand. You are the battery. You are the one they're they draining. Oh, shit. 